Well, welcome everyone to today's webinar. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Emily Kurth and I'm the communication specialist here at RealityWorks. Here at RealityWorks, I am primarily responsible for email marketing and content creation. And part of that job means speaking with teachers across the country to learn what they're doing in their classrooms and how they're engaging their students. And it's those educators who have shared many of the tips I'm going to pass along to you today. So let's get started. We will kick things off by quickly reviewing what RealityWorks is for those of you who aren't familiar with our company. Then we'll dive into soft skills. We'll talk about what they are and share some current research on why they're so important. We'll share 10 specific ideas you can use to teach those skills in your classroom. And we'll wrap things up by reviewing some of the interactive training tools and resources we offer to engage students in soft skill development. With that, let's begin. So who is RealityWorks? Well, we are an employee-owned company based in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, that creates experiential learning tools for teaching skills. We got our start over 20 years ago when former NASA engineer Rick Germain created the very first Real Care Baby Infant Simulator, and then went on to found the company that's now RealityWorks. Today, our learning solutions combine curriculum with hands-on learning activities, student assessments, and more. We really strive to create tools that are easy to implement into programs and that offer plenty of customer support. Ideas for our resources come from educators just like you. We're constantly asking teachers what they need to do their jobs better. And those questions have led to the development of a variety of the products that you see on your screen now which include bovine birthing and ultrasound simulators, ECG simulators, virtual reality welding tools, and even hydroponics. Now, one common theme that comes up every time we speak with teachers is soft skills. Over the years, we've really found that educators from all pathways share a common concern, ensuring that their students have the skills they need to succeed. So what are soft skills? Well, soft skills or employability skills, also called job readiness skills, they all mean one thing. They're the personal attributes that enable students to interact effectively and harmoniously with others. They're really considered that bedside manner of the workplace. And we've heard others say, and we agree, hard skills might get you in the door for an interview, but soft skills are what helps you get and keep a job. And most importantly, this concept applies for any job. Soft skills are vital for all career paths. And research shows that soft skills, particularly teamwork, empathy, patience, and critical thinking are used in offices and at work sites across the country every single day. And demand for these skills is growing. Back in 2014, CNBC, whoopsies. Back in 2014, CNBC conducted a study uh, that found 44% of employers cited soft skills as the biggest gap in the US workforce. Five years later, LinkedIn's Global Talent Trends 2019 report found that 92% of professionals reported that soft skills were equally or more important to hire for than hard skills. And 89% of those respondents said that when a new hire doesn't work out, it's due to a lack of critical soft skills. Today, those skills are more important than ever. With much of the country still experiencing the COVID-19 pandemic, soft skills have become essential. After all, so many People work in different environments. Many have been forced into different routines. They have new ways of connecting with colleagues. For folks working from home, there's been increased importance on skills like time management and productivity. Now, the chart on your screen now comes from career site ZD, which just last month updated their top 10 employability skills recruiters and hiring managers are looking for. As you can see, problem solving, communication, adaptability, and time management are all among the top. So how can you help your students prepare for successful futures, especially in a workforce that could be very different from what they may have expected? Well, that is why we're here today. Let's go ahead and share some tips, 10 ways to teach soft skills in any classroom. Our first tip is to assign group work to foster teamwork. Teamwork, of course, includes that mix of interactive, interpersonal, problem solving, and communication skills needed by a group of people working on a common task toward a common goal. In a conversation with North Carolina facts teacher Ashley Edmonds recently, we talked about the benefits of teamwork in her facts classroom. For Ashley, any assignment that involves collaboration will help her students hone their ability to work in teams. 
You can do this in your classroom by assigning in class time to research a topic and present as a group. Be sure to require that each student spends an equal amount of time presenting a different portion of the information. If your students are learning via computer, you can use Zoom to accomplish this as well. Students can schedule their own Zoom meetings, work together via video conferencing tools, and then present to the class either via video conferencing tool or perhaps by creating a group PowerPoint. Be sure to emphasize the value of teamwork by debriefing. We suggest asking your students questions like how they felt during the activity or what challenges did they face to really encourage them to consider the strengths of their team and what they had to do to ensure effective communication. Our second tip is to begin each class with an elbow bump. We all know that a good handshake can make a huge impression in any setting. You can help your students start to hone that skill right away by starting each day with a handshake, or these days an elbow bump or even a virtual high five. Start each day by giving every student individually the opportunity to bump elbows, offer that air high five or shake hands while maintaining good eye contact and a smile. Doing this actually lets you accomplish several things. First, it teaches your students the best practices of what's really a polite greeting, eye contact, a firm handshake or elbow bump and a smile. Second, it gives your students regular opportunities to practice a very basic soft skill. Third, it speaks to your relationship with your students. They see you taking the time to personally greet them every day. And if, of course, if you're teaching via computer for students learning remotely, you can encourage your students to participate as well by high-fiving their webcam. Just make sure that in the moments before or after that they're maintaining good eye contact as well, smiling, and that you hear that confident good morning or good afternoon. And with each student, of course, return the greeting individually. Now on the screen in front of you, we did include a link to a YouTube video that I highly recommend you watch. Uh, an educator created this video after instilling this practice in her classroom, and she recorded the impact it had on her students. It's a wonderful video that really emphasized the value of, of, a, of a small daily activity like this. Our next tip is to cultivate empathy. Empathy is the ability to identify with another person by sharing in their perspective and feelings. This soft skill is commonly valued in the helping professions like counseling and social work, but really it can bring great value to teams in all professions by helping develop camaraderie and trust. Wisconsin nursing instructor Casey Carlson recently recommended to me that teachers cultivate empathy at every opportunity, whether it's through a reading, a simulation, a group discussion, or another activity. You can do this in your classroom by assigning a reading and having students pair up to discuss their feelings on the topics. They could present their thoughts to the class to foster a large group discussion, or they can summarize their discussion in a written report and practice that other soft skill of written communication. If your students are learning remotely, they could complete a video assignment. Then they could pair up using Zoom or a similar tool to discuss their feelings on the topic. They could even present their thoughts to the class via a recorded video, a Zoom presentation, or a writing assignment submitted via an LMS system. Now, if you're interested in learning how you can cultivate empathy in your classroom more, we recommend downloading the free guide that we have on our website. It features classroom ideas focused on developing empathy toward older adults. Now, this guide is ideal for health science students or family and consumer sciences courses, but really anyone who interacts with uh, older adults on, in any way can use the ideas and activities in this guide to really consider the value of empathy and sensitivity toward people who are different from them. Our next tip is to add relevancy with real world examples. The more relevant you can make your lessons, the more your students will engage with the content and connect what you're teaching them with their own futures. And that's why Louisiana culinary teacher Jennifer Ebert recommends incorporating those real world examples about how your students are already using soft skills every day. You can do this in your classroom by giving students a chance to stand up and share a skill they use each day at say their job or even an athletic activity. And then talk about how those skills make a difference in those situations. If your students are learning via the internet, you can conduct the exact same exercise via Zoom, or you could even have students create PowerPoint slides illustrating their examples. Our next tip is to incorporate scenario-based learning. Learning experiences that are scenario-based, like role-playing, are great for many reasons. They build confidence, they promote self-esteem, and it's a great method of student-driven active learning, which we know today's students crave. 
Now, of course, classic scenarios include role-playing job interviews, dealing with customer complaints or handling disruptive clients. But new ideas we've learned from educators include proposing 21st century dilemmas, such as asking students whether they would answer a text in the middle of a staff meeting or check Facebook at work. You might have a group of students debate what to do when you've finished your assigned task at work. Do you go home early or do you find other tasks to accomplish? The idea is to be creative. Instead of going off a predetermined dialogue, give your students prompts and see where it goes. We also suggest bringing, bringing in others, invite teachers, administrators, or even community members to participate. If you're interested in more scenario-based learning tips, we recommend visiting our website to download a free guide using scenario-based learning to explore careers. You'll find ideas, tips, and best practices for creating your own scenarios that promote career exploration and skill development. Another tip is to practice professionalism daily. I was recently in an Illinois welding teacher's classroom and the instructor who had come from industry was lamenting the fact that his students couldn't communicate, didn't know the value of showing up on time, etc. A great place to start developing those skills is right there in the classroom, especially if they're not experiencing those requirements anywhere else. By demanding professionalism, you're setting your students up to succeed in the workplace. The key is consistency. Every day, make sure your students know that they're expected to arrive on time, come prepared, use proper spelling and punctuation, maybe even dress for success. We know you might not be able to do every one of these items every day, but the idea is to mimic an office environment and get your students used to those professional habits. Again, this is particularly powerful for students who are not already experiencing those requirements anywhere else. This could be that boost they need to develop some great habits for future jobs. Our next tip is to implement networking activities. I was recently speaking to a nursing instructor who uses some of our geriatric training tools, and she told me that she starts every one of her CNA courses with a networking activity. She asks her students pair up to ask each other specific questions, and then they stand up in front of the class and they introduce each other. For her, this activity not only helps her get to know her students, but it creates an atmosphere of familiarity that makes it a whole lot easier for her students to collaborate later when they practice their clinical skills. Now, this tip may have come from a nursing instructor, but networking and teamwork are important for all students. And these types of activities, even brief ones, give your students a chance to practice their interpersonal communication skills and build self-confidence. Our next tip is to make intentional assignment tweaks. This might be one of my favorite tips. New research tells us that the ability of a company to adapt has been called the new competitive advantage, and the same is true of individuals. These days, demand is growing for employees who can adapt to an ever-changing workplace, who are open to new ideas, and who don't panic when things don't go according to plan. You can encourage these traits in your students by making intentional assignment tweaks. I was recently interviewing some digital communication students at our local tech college, and they were telling me how quickly they had to adapt to pre-planned social media posts when their professor intentionally changed the theme of the week at the last possible minute. She did this on purpose. She wanted them to have the opportunity to practice that adaptability and adjust to change, and boy, it stuck with them. They had to scramble to create and schedule content, and they remembered it. Intentional assignment tweaks or changes halfway through can really help your students learn how to be flexible and adapt to change, two important soft skills. Our next tip is to make time for reflection. Reflection engages critical faculties and it allows information to become meaningful. Plus it helps build an in-demand soft skill, critical thinking. You can encourage reflection anytime. The fun thing about reflection is that it's something people have to learn and practice. The more you do it, the stronger your students' critical thinking skills will be. We suggest incorporating reflection opportunities like journaling before something important. Students could run through what they already know about a topic just before you begin discussing it in class, for instance. You could incorporate a reflection activity during a long-term project or task to give your students a chance to assess their own understanding and reflect. You could also do it after a learning experience. Ask your students what they learned, what stumped them, do this as a group or individually. Either way, you'll get feedback on the experience and your students will be encouraged to make connections. Our final tip is to practice giving and receiving feedback. 
According to a 2017 analysis by the Wall Street Journal, U.S. colleges are falling short when it comes to teaching students critical thinking skills, like assessing evidence and interpreting data. Peer review and peer-to-peer -peer feedback can be an effective way to help students hone those skills. Plus, it increases student engagement and helps them see the relevancy of what they're doing. Two important concepts for today's students. To do this in your classroom, we suggest considering the tips on your screen now. Set expectations. It's about helping, not judging. Use a feedback rubric to fine tune the process and encourage specific suggestions. Keep it anonymous so your students are comfortable being honest and moderate feedback to ensure that the feedback remains fair and helpful. Start small, like with a short assignment um, or possibly an assessment worksheet and go from there. Now that we've shared 10 tips for teaching soft skills in any class, let's take just a few moments to review some of the hands-on tools and resources that we've created here at RealityWorks to help teachers address soft skills. So the first two programs I'd like to briefly review are our, our employability and leadership soft skills programs. These are our original soft skills programs, and they're really designed to offer out-of-the-box solutions for teaching key employability skills like the ones we just talked about teamwork, communication, time management, as well as leadership specific skills like trust, coaching, and mentoring. Both programs include lessons specific to individual soft skills, and all lessons give your students the chance to apply skills at least two to four times per lesson. Really, there's a breadth of content in both of these programs. For instance, lesson number one focuses on communication. And in that lesson, your students will dive into verbal communication, nonverbal communication, and even written communication, where they learn how to write a business letter. In the time management lesson, students will really take a serious look at their own personal schedules and determine how they're truly spending their time and prioritizing. Again, there's a breadth of content in both of these out-of-the-box programs, which are designed to help you teach those soft skills, whether you have an hour of class time, more or less. We also offer online employability and leadership skills. These two programs are new within the last two years, and they're really great web-based options for teaching those same soft skills that we were talking about with our paper-based programs on the previous slide. The online employability skills program covers 19 key soft skills, and the online leadership skills program covers 18 leadership skills. Only instead of paper-based worksheets and workbooks, your students get self-paced interactive lessons They'll get videos, interactive quizzes, and other engaging activities that they can use to practice essential soft skills through every lesson. Now, if you want to learn more about these online programs, we do offer a free trial on our website. You can hop on the URL on your screen and complete just a real quick form for a free trial. This will give you access to a single lesson from each program and the accompanying instructor guides so you can really see if this might work for you. And if it does, we offer a variety of lesson links and terms. So visit our website, we encourage you to check it out. The final tool that I wanted to just quickly review are our soft skills activity cards. These career scenario cards are really great options for quick icebreaker activities or even small or large group discussions. They all feature real world scenarios from specific careers, which give your students a chance to practice soft skills like communication and teamwork within the context of actual jobs. If you're wondering how these cards might fit into your curriculum, I encourage you to visit our website. You can download three free activity cards from each of our pathways, agriculture, health science, trade skills, and family and consumer sciences to preview the activities and test them out for yourself. So now what? I encourage you to try one of the tips I shared today and see if it works in your classroom. I also encourage you to visit our website. We offer a free downloadable classroom poster featuring the top 20 soft skills today's employers need. This is a great way to jumpstart a conversation about soft skills in any classroom. I also encourage you to take a moment to download our free guide, Five Ideas for Incorporating Soft Skills into Every Classroom. It'll dive in a little more to a few of the tips that we just covered in this presentation, but it'll also share some new ideas as well. And of course, contact us if you have any questions. We can connect you with your local account manager to learn more about our specific tools or to talk about how you might use them in your program. Thank you so much for taking the time to attend today's webinar. I hope you found the information valuable. Please feel free to visit our website or contact us if you have any questions.
Thank you.